Hi guys and welcome to today's video. Today we're going to be going over some basic ways in which you can animate your text in HitFilm 4 Express. Animating text uh, requires you to know two things. First is how to actually create text inside of HitFilm and the second is how to animate or how to keyframe. So if you don't already know those, I've got two videos that go in depth on those. But we're going to cover the basics of those two things in this video if you don't already know how to. So here we've got a piece of text, it's called Shiny Films. And we're going to do some basic uh, animation with it. So what happens if you don't know how to create this piece of text? Well, it's quite simple really. All you have to do is press New Layer to insert a new layer and select Text Layer. You can select the size of your text box uh, which I'm going to set mine to be uh, 1920 by 1080, which is the size of my composite shot. And now I can go into the text tool right here, click inside my text box, and type in whatever I want. So, for example, shiny films. Once you've typed in all your text, you can highlight it uh, like you could in Microsoft Word. Go into your text tab up here, and you can change the font, uh, you can change all sorts of things in here. So I'm going to make mine, again, like it was centered. Uh, I'm going to change it. Actually, I'm going to keep it at size 200. And I'm going to make it spaced so it's right about the middle. That's how you do it anyway. So I'm going to delete this. And we've got pretty much the same thing right here. I'm going to go back into my transform tool now so we can edit uh, the position and the scale and all sorts of things for this text. So to start doing this, go into your controls tab. And the first thing that we want to open is the transform. And under here we'll find all the properties for everything to do with movement and such. So at the most very basic, um, we can animate, say, something like the position. So let's just have a look um, at how we can animate things. So again, I've got that video uh, which covers it in great detail, but the basics are you need to animate, you need keyframes. And a keyframe is simply a point in time uh, that saves some data, uh, and that's pretty much what it is. So to activate keyframing, uh, for say for position, we can click on this little circle next to our position and we'll notice that down here uh, if We just opened up all these properties and opened up our transform as well uh, We've got a keyframe and it comes up as a diamond because it's a, an ordinary keyframe and what it means is that it's saved that this position um, In time so at this point in time at the very beginning of the composite shot It's going to be at the very center. So I'm just going to move it over to the left like so or you can use uh, these tools like so and all you need to do now is say I'm gonna go two seconds in so I'm gonna go into the time code here and make sure I'm two seconds in and what I can do is to make another keyframe I can just re-enter the value or change the value and now it, as soon as I press enter there uh, to make it go back into the center it creates another keyframe and it saved these two positions in time so you'll see that now at the beginning it's at negative 1608 and here it's, it's at zero and you'll see that between these two points uh, it moves between them and that's pretty much how we animate what you can also do is uh, go into your layer properties and turn on motion blur and so whenever you manually animate position or scale or transform of your objects you'll notice that uh, you'll have some motion blur uh, which makes it feel much more real uh, however it will take a bit longer to render uh, in terms of your video rendering time so let me just turn that off, um, and with that basic knowledge, you can pretty much animate whatever you want. So that's how we animate something like position. Uh, to deactivate keyframe, all you have to do is click again uh, on that circle, and you'll notice it turns blank, such as before. And we're going to animate, uh, say, scale. So we can, at the very beginning, we can turn on keyframing by hitting that button. We can set the scale to be 0 and 0, um, which is for x and y values. And two seconds in, we can set the scale to be 100%. And now between those two keyframes, it'll scale up like so. So you can play around with all of these values. Uh, for example, rotation as well. So I'm going to set a keyframe for the rotation here. And what this means uh, is the number of degrees. So if I just go here and I set the, and if I drag this around, you'll see uh, I'm changing the amount of degrees that it's turning. And then notice that the number left to it, right here, is the amount of full rotations it's already gone through. So this is one rotation plus 14 uh, degrees, which as an absolute value is 374 degrees. 
So what I'm going to do is just at that point, I'm going to just quickly remove keyframing. I'm going to go and set all these values back. I'm going to re-enable keyframing and then at two seconds where I've got my scale keyframe, I'm going to make it do two turns. So now we'll see that it scales up and uh, it also rotates in place like so. So that's the basics of animating your text. You can click off this video, but I've got a whole bunch of other things uh, which I'm sure you'll find useful for animating your text as well. So what we can do is now animate the opacity of the text. So as you can see here, um, this is how we can fade in our text and make it fade back out again. And the opacity property is found under here in our opacity settings. So to recreate this by ourselves, what we can do is animate that. So I've got that default text back here again. I'm going to select the layer. Um, at the very beginning, I'm going to keyframe the opacity to be 0%. And then, uh, say, one second in, I'm going to make it 100%. At two seconds in, I'm going to keep it at 100%. So to, to add a new keyframe that's the same, I'm just going to change the value and change it back up again. And then at three seconds, I'm going to set it back down to 0%. And now if we play it back, we can see it fades in and fades back out again. This is also visible from our keyframes, uh, as we can see here. So moving on into our next uh, tab, here we have something a bit different. So it's pretty much the same, but I'm going to show you what the anchor point does. So this is uh, a different type of rotation. Uh, rather than rotating around its center, it's rotating around the corner here. And the way we do this is from the anchor point. So if I remove this and I go back to our default text, um, if we look at now transform, uh, we open it up, uh, we can see that also everything uh, here, we've got a center. So we've got a center where we can, uh, we've got the point here and you can move around with the arrows. Um, however, this center is changeable from the anchor point. So for example, if we change the anchor point to be around, okay, let's make it the S here. make it right on the middle of the S and what we can do is we can just copy paste these values into our uh, position and now you'll see that the anchor point is actually around the S and what that means is that whenever we scale something instead of scaling around the center uh, it'll scale around the S and the same deal goes for rotation it'll rotate around this S so this is pretty cool uh, if you want to change up your animation styles have it rotate in like an arc as though it's swinging from something the next thing we're going to do is look at 3D. So it's really not uh, as difficult as it sounds, uh, but what we're going to do is we're just going to do something like this. So here we've utilized the 3D uh, capabilities of HitFilm uh, to make it rotate this text in a 3D layer. So I'm going to remove all of this. We've got our default text right here, doing nothing. And the first thing we're going to want to do is go up into our layer properties. and under dimension, uh, we can turn on 3D. It'll come up with this dialog box, and yes, you do need to add a camera in order to see your 3D composites. So click yes. You'll notice that this camera has been added. You don't really need to mess with that. But if we go into our transform now, rather than just having one rotation, uh, we've got three different rotations. So rather than having two scales, two positions, two anchor points, we've got three. And that's because we've got a third axis uh, which is the z-axis, so that's from forward and backwards. So in this way we can uh, now rotate things, so z is, if we rotate something around the z, that's how we would normally rotate things, uh, but we can also rotate things around the y to get a really cool 3D view, um, and around the x as well, so we can really fully um, make our text rotate and scale around uh, in full 3D. And you can animate these properties in the exact same way you did with all of these. Next we're going to look at masks. So here we have a piece of text and it's got a mask as you can see, um, but this is what it looks like. It's slowly fading in uh, and it's not moving in, it's just uh, slowly being faded in. So how do we create this? Well, we can create it through a mask. So we've got our default text right here. And to create a mask, we've got three mask tools down here. We've got a rectangular mask, ellipse mask, and freehand mask tool. So I've got a whole video on masks, 
uh, which you can find in the description. Uh, but if we just grab our rectangular mask tool, we can say drag it over a certain part of our text, and you'll see that wherever we drag the rectangle, our text will be visible. And that's pretty much all that a mask does. Where the mask's selection is, uh, the layer will be visible. So we can just drag a box around our text like so. And now we can be begin to animate some properties of this. So if we go into our masks here, go into our mask that we just created, on the transform, what I'm going to do is I'm going to animate the position. And we can just drag, sorry not the Y, we can drag the X value all the way until it's around here. And then two seconds in, we can drag all the way until it's over the whole thing, like so. And now when we play this back, we'll see that the mask moves from the left to the right. And that's pretty much how we want it. You can go ahead and adjust all sorts of things in here as well, such as feather strength, which is pretty much a smoothing option. So if we go and turn that up quite a bit, uh, we'll notice that, actually let's turn it down, we'll notice that uh, now the edges are sort of smoothed out. Um, we can set it to make sure that it feathers from only the outside or only the inside. So that's a whole bunch of ideas of how you can animate your text. Here I've just got a bunch of uh, another ideas on how you can animate your text to make it look really cool. So the way I've done this is I've used effects from the effect panel. So let me just quickly back, go back into my transform tool. Oops, scale back to fit. And you'll see that we've got a whole bunch of effects here um, as you would normally have in HitFilm and pretty much every single property of these effects is animatable. So you can keyframe all of these effects. And this comes in really handy uh, if you're trying to do some really cool animated text. So let's just play the first one. And you'll notice that it goes from a sort of blur and into a sharp, shiny film. And what I've pretty much done here is I've done actually two things. First of all, I've dragged the blur effect on. At the very beginning, uh, it's set to 114.5 pixels, which is a lot of blur. And at the very end, I've set it to be 0 pixels. So that means it slowly goes from lots of blur to no blur. And I've also uh, keyframed the opacity so that it goes from completely transparent to 100% opaque. Here's another idea. I haven't really uh, thought this through very much, but uh, if we just go to the beginning here, That's just a pretty cool idea I thought of. Uh, the effect is called Insect Vision, and what I've simply done is I've animated the lens size. Now it can't go lower than 5 pixels, because then it would be really hard to calculate, um, but you know, that's pretty much what I've done. And I've also keyframed the scale as well, so that as the size goes down of the lens, it goes from really big to really small, the actual scale of the image goes from small to big. So that's just an idea I thought of. Another thing I thought of was this mosaic. So I've keyframed this uh, mosaic so that it's really pixelated at the beginning and slowly turns into much less pixelated. So now we're going to get into some 3D stuff. Here I've got a piece of text that's just swiveling in like so. And the way I've done that is I've combined some of the techniques from the anchor point, except I've moved the anchor point closer towards us so that when I rotate it, uh, it sort of rotates around us, which is pretty cool. And finally, just to finish it all off, I've got... Uh, a final piece of text, which is the Star Wars crawl. Um, I'm really looking forward to seeing Rogue One, of course. It's going to be awesome, and this is how you can create some awesome uh, Star Wars text. So thank you guys for watching this. I hope this helped you out. Uh, I've got a lot of people commenting on my video saying, "Oh, tell me how to do animated text." Um, I've done, you know, a whole bunch of different things uh, with animation, uh, animated text, animated lower thirds all sorts of things, but I thought this would be a really good video uh, just to make sure that it all works well together. Hope you guys enjoyed this, I hope this was useful to you. Uh, if it was, obviously please like this video. If you have an idea for a new video, if, you, if there's something you need to know about HitFilm, please comment it down below so that I can try and make a video on it. And with all that being said, I hope to see you guys in the next video. Stay shiny. Bye!